Hey, Carl here to say that Music to Code By is now an app called Music to Flow By. Now you can listen to the tracks on your phone with offline capability. The first three tracks are free, and the entire catalog is available by subscription with a new track arriving every month. Just go to musictoflowby.com for all the links. Welcome back to .NET Rocks. This is Carl Franklin. And this is Richard Campbell. Still in the terrarium. At yes. <laughs> the human terrarium. <laughs> we are all plants. Every once in a while, some mother walks by with her daughter and they're looking at her. Wow, look at those. What are those? <laughs> what are those big turtles? <laughs> we're funny looking turtles. That's us. Anyway, we're still at Build 2018 and uh, we're going to have a really good show. This I'm is excited. Like, yeah, uh, I'm awesome. feeling that uh, Andrew's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, very informative. But first, we have this little thing we need to do called Better Know Framework. Awesome. All right, dude, what do you got? So, uh, this is a lab and at Visual uh, Studio, Mm -hmm. uh, the Team Foundation Server 2018 Labs. And this is using code analysis with Visual Studio 2017 to improve code quality. And so this was from last year, but it's really good. And, and I, I stumbled on this by um, finding articles about dead code from 2013 using oh, yeah. code analysis. And I just sort of uh, looked for something that people can really sink their teeth into. So you can go through this lab, and uh, it basically performs static code analysis to help developers identify potential design, uh, globalization, interoperability, performance, security, and a host of other categories of potential problems. And so you can run code analysis manually in Visual Studio at any time within the IDE, or you, but you can also set it up to run automatically as part of a team build or a check-in policy for oh, TFS. Wow, so this used to be part of your CI/CD stream. Absolutely, that's cool. Yep. So it, it, the lab introduces you to it and to code analysis and how to configure rules sets to use, and then how to suppress specific rules at a project and source code level. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I wanted to share today. Brilliant, dude. Nice yeah. One. Who's uh, talking to us today, Mr. Campbell? Knowing we're talking a little bit about installation today, I grabbed a comment off of show 1535, the one we did back in April of 2018, where we talked to Paul Betts about deploying using Squirrel. Aha. Uh-huh. So open source uh-huh. library, yeah. you know, all of that good stuff. It's like, like click once, but it works, right? That's, that's exactly that's, their that's description. Uh-huh. I love that Andrew <laughs> knows that. That's exactly that makes me what very it is. happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Nasir Zubair uh, had a really in- interesting comment. He says, uh, I'm a desktop engineer. I'm usually involved with managed environments where there are several IT and security controls in place to prevent users from installing applications, including untested and often untrusted code in the environment. Deployment mechanisms such as Squirrel and ClickOnce actively work to circumvent some of these controls. Mm-hmm. Over the years, I've seen these deployment methods cause production outages because bad code was pushed and an application automatically updated. Then it's up to desktop-supported administrators to clean up and roll back, often manually. Mm-hmm. I think there was a missed opportunity here to bring to the, the systems administrators concern to the table. And I guess you can lay that on my lap. Huh? <laughs> uh, the concerns are amplified when it's a third-party application where IT pros have no control over integration testing. But all in all, it was a very good discussion, and I really enjoyed it. Good. Uh, yeah, you're right. We really did not talk about that in that whole hour about those more managed installation environments. Because Squirrel's whole claim to fame is that idea of here are the hooks for a developer to add to their app when you're closing it or whenever you want to, mm-hmm. to sort of pipe in updates. And I, I mean, I could almost live with that if it's apps internal to the organization and we, we just sort of trust that pipeline works. Um, I, would, I appreciated that Paul Betts, at the time that comment was made, which was only a few weeks ago, did say, hey, look, this was 100% by design. I'm really sorry. But, you know, part of the issue here from a developer perspective is that IT admins often backlog updates so far uh-huh. that it creates serious, serious problems. Right. And so, but ultimately, this is a developer has to make a decision about how they're going to do that and how they work within the constraints of the environment they're working in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think that compensates for 
what should have probably been a segment in that show. And so I apologize to Ines here. I think you made a really great point. But I'll try and make it up to you with a copy of Music to Code by. Yeah. So thanks so much for your comment. And we'll get in touch with you and get that copy to you. If you'd like a copy of Music to Code by, write a comment on the website at donnetrocks.com or via any of our social media. Because we publish every show to Facebook and Google+. And if you comment there and we read it in the show, we'll send you a copy of Music to Code by. Absolutely. And uh, follow us on Twitter. He's at Rich Campbell. I'm at Carl Franklin. Send us a tweet. We keep him away from the squirrels. <laughs> we have a special sack. <laughs> sack of tweets. You used to keep the nuts in it, but nope, now nope. we keep the tweets now in it. Now we keep the tweets in it. All right, and that brings us to our guest today. Andrew Clank is the group program manager for the app model on the developer platform for Windows. That's correct. Welcome, Andrew. Bit but, of a mouthful. Yeah, it? but you've had a... a a very an illustrious storied career. career. I, li- I, I like storied might be more true yeah. than illustrious. <laughs> uh, you've worked on some of our favorite things, and the, you, like the scripting and JavaScript and VB script. And that is correct. Yes, long, long time ago. Yeah, I was the one and only script PM. Uh, we would like to have had more than one, but we just had me. Yeah. So yeah, it didn't get past that. That's so cool. And yeah. Win phone time too. Uh, yeah, Windows Phone. Yeah, we we tried that. That, that that was fun. Still my favorite phone UI of uh, all time. Yeah, no, mine too. They're yeah. pretty good wind phone-like shells for Android these days. Are there? You can yeah. really kind of fiddle with it. It's, yeah. it's more work than I want to do because yeah. messing with shells creates its own set of problems. Sure. Yeah. I've also come to the realization now that all smartphones suck. And once you're there, <laughs> yeah, you, you just know, accept it. You just move accept on, it. Right? It's like, so, no, yeah. misery is normal. Yeah, Maybe I'm yeah. actually a Buddhist, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> suffering is normal. So, right? All life is suffering. All life is suffering. All phones are suffering. You should have joyful Participation in the sorrows of the world. That's it. <laughs> That's just a, yeah, it's a joyful participation in the sorrows of the smartphone. That's yeah, where right. we go. <laughs> and we pay a lot of money for that. A lot of money sorrow. for that suffering. <laughs> yeah. That is some expensive suffering yeah. we're doing right there. No, it's joyful suffering. There right? you yeah. go. Well, anyway, so so tell us what you're doing these days. Uh, some install technology. Yeah, so mm, what is it? I work on the app model, which means a whole bunch of different yeah, things. All so, kinds of things. Yeah. Um, I like to think of us as the plumbing team. You know, there's, there's painters and plumbers. Mm-hmm. I think it was one of Terry's last kind of quotes. Is you know, there's a XAML team in the, in the uh, developer platform, which is awesome. Yeah. But I, I don't, my team doesn't do pixels mostly. Yeah. Okay, so those are so, the painters. Yeah, they're the painters. We're the plumbers. So you know, we kind of joke we're the kind of cradle to grave team. We'll install you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll integrate you with the operating system. So like live tiles. Yeah. Um, uh, adaptive cards, which right. are big today. Yeah, and right. they, we just did a show with sets too. So oh, we yeah, yeah, sets. sets be part yeah. Of that. So activities, sure. the activity feed, which my team builds, is behind sets nice. and timeline and mm. all that good stuff. Uh, Cloud clipboard. We just the build that just came out has Cloud clipboard. Right, the April mm-hmm. edition. Yeah, so we're the kind of the model and they're the view. You know, that kind so of. Let's build. not let Cloud clipboard go by. Yeah, is that what I think it is? Yes, it is. It's, <laughs> well, I don't know. What do you I think know. it is? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm not even going to guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm think, a, thinking it a, it's a clipboard that goes from place to place and service to service. You can copy on one machine and paste on another. Yeah, right. So Windows key and C and Windows key, or Windows key and V really is the right. the trick. The paste is the magic. Yeah, the paste Anybody is the copy. magic. So um, You can use that to copy files from VMs and across. Uh, well, not, in, not in the first version. Oh, okay. So what we're trying to work out is we, we looked at one of the great things about working in Windows is we get a load of telemetry yeah, in terms that. of what are people doing. And there's like, because we really struggled. It's like, wow, people won't use it if they can't copy files or they can't copy images. Well, right? RDP lets you do that. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, turns out that we're fairly simple people, really, when it comes down to it, is that we actually copy about the average uh, cut and paste is about 60 to 70K. Huh. And we're like, oh, That's not which a was deal. a surprise to yeah. us. We thought it was yeah, going right. to be more than that. Megabytes. Gigabytes. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so the way that Cloud Clipboard works it actually puts the clipboard content onto your activity feed. Now, the activity feed is really important because it, it's either your MSA or your AAD. Right. The AAD part is really important there because that could be corporate content you're putting on that. Sure. And, you yeah. know, your corporate overlord might not want you to copy and paste stuff over there. Right. So the activity feed actually is compliant in terms of if you look at your know, GDPR is a big thing right now. Right, right? So yeah. your corporation or maybe even your country, like for example, in, in Germany, if you're going to store data for the user, that data has to stay in Germany. Right. It can't. Yeah. And that's, you know, and there's lots of countries have different rules. Sure. So 
our data store is compliant with the rules of where you might be, mm-hmm. uh, be that a company. Mm. Or, so that is why we're, so we're li- the cloud clipboard right now is, is about 100K okay. for each entry. Right. And our goal over time is to increase that so that, like, for example, you might copy a big file mm. and it's like, well, is that file actually local or is it actually on OneDrive? Should we just... Mm get the link and yeah, be smart it. about it. Even users don't know yeah, or, no, or sure. care necessarily. Yeah. And shouldn't think about it. Right. It should just work. Or a picture. But so we, you know, so transferring that data up into the cloud, clearly we can do, but that's something which we're going to be working on sure. over time. Oh, that's great. Who's going to pay for that storage? Well, exactly. <laughs> there, is, there is the fun part, right? The 100K is like, oh, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, right? So yeah, pick yeah. that up for yeah, you. Well, yeah, we'll cover you on that. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, the, great, file the great thing clearly. about the activity feed is certainly for your AAD, it's your corporate, your company's paying for that. Right. So that's great. Uh, and MSA, then you get a fair amount there, but it's not it's not completely unlimited. So AAD being Azure Active Directory. Uh, Azure Active Directory. And MSA. Your, MSA, the Microsoft um, account. So, yeah. you know, your Outlook.com account or right. yeah. you know, your Xbox Live account. That yeah, type those of things. Kind of things. Like Skype. Yeah. All right, so that was a nice little tangent to cl- cloud it's, clipboard. But, it's just sort of, but know, it sets the stage. But hey, yeah. 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 This is you the know, kind of the cradle grave, about. if you really don't like that app, we'll yeah. uninstall you too, right? So yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. And guarantee that uninstall. That's and, kind and of everything's going to be fine. We yeah. promise, for sure. Really. But a, a big push <laughs> at, at build this time has been about something which we're calling MSIX. Right, yeah. Which is our new kind of evolution of our deployment tech. Right. Um, we were talking about, yeah, Square. Squirrel squirrel. Yeah, yeah. Well, and in, it's been an ongoing theme for us talking about the fact that there are more and more desktop tools and deployment is an issue. That, yeah. That yeah, is, yeah. It's hard to put software onto a- machines. Absolutely. And, you know, this is a couple of things you, you pointed out. This There's this, I don't know, maybe not as trustworthy a relationship as we had hoped between dev and IT pros. Right? <laughs> everybody loves built, everybody. It has built over time. Everything and is and awesome. there, there's some good reasons. And, it's tough yeah. to install software and to get it right. Mm-hmm. You sure. know, my team, we own, my deployment team owns essentially all the deployment techs you could ever imagine from Microsoft. Mm. Um, they're not VB script, which people do use. Which, yeah. um, but so MSI, ClickOnce, AppV, yeah. AppX, which sure. we own all of that. And we get all the telemetry of that. Um, and it's interesting in terms of, you know, clearly there are millions of MSI installs every day. Yeah, and and the thing that shocks people when when I ask them is that okay, so you know what percentage do you think actually, you know, what do you think the, the success rate is, and you know it goes from zero percent if you're having a bad day through to well it just 100%. works every t- it just right. works you don't even uh, think about it in reality it's somewhere between seventy and eighty percent, hmm. um, and that you know and, and I'm wrestling with this I, I mean it's very Pareto's law uh-huh. right yeah and it, I don't think I can't call it good right it's just not. And our goal for in deployment is to get in, you know, five nines, essentially. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So, you know, in AppX today, which is, you know, primarily being used from store applications, mm-hmm. but also you might have heard of the desktop bridge. That's also my team. Yeah. Um, we're getting millions of installs every day. And I, you know, last time I looked at our stats, just I think it was yesterday, it was we're at like 99.7%. Wow, it, great. And that's over gazillions of, of installs. Yeah. And that's where we want to move the industry. Because if you're an ISV using MSI, well, that's support cost. If if it fails, then you've got to... Right. If you're an IT guy, it's like, oh, that means you probably have to send somebody to that machine yeah. to go fix it. Yep. Mm. Again, support cost goes up. Mm. Um, and so people are really struggling with that. And it's it's not that people aren't writing good installers. To be perfectly honest, MSI is just not that great. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned that I was a script guy. Um one of the things that I added to MSI as a script guy was like, wouldn't it be great if we could put script in an MSI? Because then you could do crazy things. Right, sure. Well, it turns out that was a really, really bad idea. <laughs> okay. Um, so they did for crazy things? They did crazy things. <laughs> for security purposes, right? right? I yeah. mean, when you're installing an application, you should never have to worry about code executing. Right. right. And um, of course, you have, but invariably, an installer has high levels of privileges because it's an installer. Yeah, absolutely. And it's hence, a vector. Yeah, you know. So as my team points out to me, it's my fault that we're in a lot of this mess. You so, know, I really, I really <laughs> appreciate Andrew. That you just come in here to take the blame. Yeah, right? yeah you know, right. it's, you just, you somebody's taking it, it for the team, right? <laughs> so put it in my inbox. Yeah, I, it, um, that was me. I did that. So you know, with with Apex, 
And and now with MSAX, we, we have a, a declarative install um, mechanism. So that you, our goal is not to take away the flexibility. Right. We want to we want to get to a point where users should never regret installing an app. That's mm. our kind of customer promise. Or at least not because of the installer. I mean, it's right. always, you might I, regret I, it because it's a terrible this app. This is a terrible app. Right. I mean, it, that, and therein lies the problem. Is yeah, like, yeah. As long as the installer works, then it's purely the merits of the software. Right. And the declarative model works great because that allows them to be infinitely flexible, but you never release a code pointer into the wild where yep. something can just go nuts. And it also means that we know what the installer did. Yeah. And, you know, Part of never regretting installing the app is like, you know, we've all installed an app. We're like, I don't know why. That's just not yeah, what I, I expected what that I was to be. Thinking, right. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, kind of a drunk install or something, yeah. right? Yeah. So <laughs> it is, then you want to uninstall that thing. <laughs> yes, you do. And you uninstall. <laughs> <Drunk> install. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Yeah, right. Woke up I, the next morning and I what was, was on my machine? I was yeah. thinking of Mark Miller's joke about how he invented a new product called the install buddy, which <laughs> automatically hits it the next okay. button. <laughs> Okay, six or okay. seven times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I agree to everything. Just give me the app. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you want to uninstall the damn thing, and it actually uninstall. Yeah. Today, it's almost impossible to write an uninstaller. Huh. Even the best uninstaller does not install. Well, or uninstall. It makes happy noises, but it yeah, also leaves and they're debris. Doing their level best. Yeah. It's not like they're trying to be bad. It's just, frankly, it's really difficult to do. Hmm. And so, and. Uninstalling applications or you know, bad installers contributes to something which we call PC rot. Yep. We've all kind of seen it, right? Oh, yeah, no. It's like, we hey, feel it. We I, yeah, I used to describe it, it as it. software is fatty food and your computer needs an angioplasty. <laughs> right. And you know, last time I checked, Intel processors don't get slower over time. Right? No, they, they, they don't. They, um, <laughs> and it's interesting talking to – developers get it Yeah, because you know, we understand. Sure. But like talking to many IT pros, they just assume Windows sucked. Yeah. And the Microsoft was never going to fix the problem. And if you let Windows run long enough, it just automatically gets right. bad. So, And they kind of build it into their process. It's like, well, every nine months, we'll just go, you know, a user will call up and we'll just re-image that machine. Right. And, mm. and we literally built tools to make that trivial. Yeah. You, you, used to, you yeah. could buy your Dell with a restore to oh, original yeah. image yeah, mode. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you, you see these... You know, registry cleaners, there are some good ones and yeah. some and not some so good ones. some that are actually malware. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And oh, we'll clean it. <laughs> so <laughs> part clean of our something. job is to fix that, is we have to fix the root cause. And the root cause, and again, this is surprisingly not known that much, is that really the root cause is right into the registry. Interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. The older and, machine is the more horrible it's registry right, is. Right, yeah. And... You know, if you write to HQ local machine, every key that you write to HQ local machine is loaded by the operating system when you boot. Oh, so forever. You, forever. So you've all seen this. You install an app, and you're like, well, my machine is starting slower. What's going on? I haven't even run the app. Yeah. So the registry as a developer and as a user seems like the ultimate headache. Why did it actually solve a problem in Windows 95 oh, it, when it know, came it, on the scene? We, again, much much like Windows script host, we, we invented it for good. Yeah. Right. And it was used for not so good reasons, right? Was, you were replacing and, INI file. But honestly, you know, at the time, yes, replacing INI and, you know, surely a database would be better than that. And, right. and it was, but as we saw applications really explode in complexity that we never imagined. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we were developing Com, we didn't, I mean, we thought it was going to be big, but not this big, right. Yeah. right? So we have applications that install hundreds of thousands of registry entries. My goodness. Wow. And again, they're not doing anything bad. They're it, doing it, kind of what we told them to it's do. It's not like the devs sat down and said, you know what we really need is 100,000 registry entries. Right. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's every COM component, yeah. every yep. interface rule. Yep. Each one of those represents a couple more entries. Yeah, yeah. And they use it for configuration, right, too, oh, which yeah. you yeah. can, instead oh, of putting it in a local. registry for things you can't, yeah. I mean, there's like, Really? ITC <laughs> with the registry? Was that really the best way we <laughs> could come up with? So when but you combine that with uninstallers that don't clean the registry, and it just now gets you've worse got, and worse yeah, and just worse. continues so to degrade. Crap. Yeah. So, so we don't actually need to reinstall the machine. We just need to delete the registry. Uh, clean the registry. <laughs> delete the registry. Have a better way to deal with the registry. <laughs> uh, I it, liked my way. I was feeling really good about that. Boy, uh, it booted it, really it fast. It works. Directly to blue Nothing screen. else does. Just, but, yeah. So you just install a policy that allows nothing to write to the registry. Yeah. Yeah. Just no, I'm sorry, the software it won't work <laughs> so you know we introduced with we introduced this in the desktop bridge and it really built on some of the tech you know hold that thought FV. hold that thought yeah. while we take a moment for this very important message
Support for .NET Rocks is brought to you by Conversational UI from Progress Telerik and Kendo UI. Conversational UI are chatbot framework agnostic user interface controls and components that enable .NET and JavaScript developers to create modern conversational chatbot experiences in their web, mobile, and desktop applications. The industry's first package set of user interface components built specifically for chatbots are available as part of Telerik's ASP.NET AJAX, ASP.NET MVC, ASP.NET Core, WinForms, WPF, Xamarin Products, and Kendo UI for jQuery, Angular, Vue, React, PHP, and JSP libraries. By implementing key UI design features such as calendars, date pickers, list views, and others that are included in the tool sets, developers will be able to improve chatbot conversation through visual elements. For more information, visit Telerik.com slash conversational dash UI. All right, we're back. Sotnet Rocks, Carl Franklin, Richard Campbell, Andrew Klink is here. We were just talking about registry cruft and all of that, but... You were about to say something. Yeah, so, um, you know, the registry was a lot of the cause of the problems. And mm-hmm. we want to give developers and IT pros a way to solve it without having to, you know, yeah. as you say, delete the registry, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't right. want to do that. Um, so in the desktop bridge and in MSIX, we introduced a, a very lightweight container that, that virtualizes your registry and your file system. And I'll get into the file system in a minute. So basically, that means your application doesn't need to change. It can write the hundred thousands of registry keys it wants. Okay. We basically lie to the app. We say, oh, sure, right. we wrote that to HP local machine. Uh, but in <laughs> reality, see. what we actually do is write it to reg.dat in your app data folder. Great. So the when your app, so the good thing about that, it doesn't slow down the machine. Sure. Right. It's only when it, you touch that app. Right. And when you yeah. launch that app, because it's because we can load it all in one. Fast yeah, swoop. it's fast. It actually loads faster right. than trying to find and if it. If it doesn't, you f- blame the app. You don't blame Windows. Well, it, well the, there's that added device. <laughs> right? but, this, um, but that was, no, yeah, that was but this idea that I'm offloading parts of my load <laughs> right. process to Windows is right. You know, that's, and, that's part of the consequence. You know, we we believe you know by providing this, it really gives applications a way to modernize and to get better. Sure. And the you know, file system is another interesting one. Is You've you talked to a lot of IT pros or people who are trying to virtualize their app on mm-hmm. a, maybe a Citrix or RDP server. Is you know you might be logging in on one server, and five minutes later you come on the sign in somewhere else. You're know, completely different server. Sure. Well, pulling that app data today means you kind of have to be an archaeologist because you have to dig around mm. on your PC. Is like, well, I think it wrote it over there. Yeah, it might have been over here. Who yeah. knows where it wrote it? Sure. By virtualizing the file system. All the app data goes into the app data folder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's right. kind of a freebie. Really. Right. Uh, so it makes it easier to administer, but it makes it a piece of cake for us to uninstall. Sure. Nice. Uninstall is just delete the folder. Because yeah. you know everything gone. goes and in there. And Everything's going in right. there. So wow. it's, a, it's a better way of actually delivering that app. Um, and the other challenge we see is we've all seen this as you try and update an app and it's like, well... Do you want to reboot your PC to update this app? And I'm like, oh, well, we really no. don't, actually. Like, no, no, that was yeah. never on my list of things to <laughs> yeah. do. I, anytime the computer interrupts what I'm trying to do to tell me about what it needs to do right. is a bad moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Automatically. Yeah. yeah. My VPN is disconnected. I don't care. Stop interrupting me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, the reason why that reboot comes up is you might be running the application whilst you're trying to update it. Right. right. So the files are locked. Yeah. With MSIX, what we actually do is we we copy down you know, the the files onto a folder, but we create a new folder, and we put basically all the application in there. So there's no file lock changes. We move the app data across from the old place to the new place. Mm-hmm. Again, the advantage of putting it all in one folder, right. and then if you're running the application, we'll let you keep running the application. But when you finally close it down, then all we do is just swap Click. you over and right. delete the old one. So you get this really smooth update process. You see, you see Office do this this day, right. these days, where Office eventually says at some point, hey, uh, there's been some updates. We need to close and reopen. Mm-hmm. Let me know when you want to. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't actually stop you from doing yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. But the moment you go, okay, you literally see, you know, word go down and it come back up. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And it, fast enough that I'm convinced nothing has happened. Right. Exactly. And because it's um, done everything in the background. Yeah. And Office has um, already moved on to uh, Desktop Bridge today. Right. So, uh, if you buy a machine with Office pre-installed, which is 
it's kind of difficult not to buy a machine. Yeah, you mean it. all machines. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that is using the desktop bridge from the store. Okay. So we have, I think, about four or five million active users doing that. Now, if you're lucky enough to live in New Zealand, then you can actually just go and download it from the store. Huh. We're starting small and, yeah. and building out. Oh, so that's your test environment is New right. Zealand. Right. New Zealand is, you know, it's... It's perfect, right? It's the, got every it's landscape the smallest to Western kind. democracy in the world yeah. and the end of the internet. Right. Because that's the yes. longest wires to anything. If they could just stop playing rugby, I'd be a happy Englishman. <laughs> but, you know, until then, <laughs> New Zealand's perfect. The all right? blacks so, love you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're moving office to that. And that was really being a kind of, if we can't get, if we can get office running on this. Right. There's a pretty high probability we can get anybody well, else. I like on this. it when you guys dog food your stuff. Like right. if, the, if the office team is willing to use your tech, uh -huh. considering their install base right. and demands, like yeah. they've got to be miserable customers. The <laughs> worst. And uh, they know where you sleep. Uh, they do know where we sleep. <laughs> they just uh, lay wait outside of your building. Like you're nobody to you get know, away from. There's them. a whole lot of M365 love between Office and Windows, okay. right? So it's uh, we're one happy. But, the, but, but for us as devs to see this is the tech that Office yeah. depends on. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, if it's going to work for them. If Microsoft's not going to bet on it, why should I? Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, we, so, and we've been in that situation before. Right. It's, like, it's a good yeah, yeah. standard. Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me which Microsoft product is using this right. approach. I don't want to have to decipher which tech is going to win. Uh, sure. It's like, okay, there's just one. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've been running Office in my team on Desktop Bridge for upwards of two years now. And why do you call it Desktop Bridge? Oh, for all kinds of terrible terrible reasons <laughs> <laughs> was, you know look, i'm not the marketing guy was, you don't name stuff you just no, have to fill it no i'm like oh yeah so <laughs> i'd like to imagine the desktop bridge never happened as a name <laughs> okay. and msix is the future right, right. so what would you call all, well i think we're old enough to remember dallas yeah, yeah, sure. Bobby Ewing died and he yeah. had to come back two years later. Yes. And yeah. he just stepped out of the shower and said, well, that was a bad dream. I kind of <laughs> yeah, think yeah. of it that's that way. Right? It's, <laughs> MSX is coming out of the shower and going, well, look, isn't what, this wonderful? Yeah. What would you call Desktop Bridge if you had to name it? Oh, I would have just called it, well, we, we just wanted to call it Centennial because we kind of loved right, that. That was okay. the code name. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's really AppX. Yeah. Uh, right. And, now, and MSI. Talent, unfortunately, we couldn't really use Apex as a name. There was For some, rock, some trademark products, kind of challenges. So problems. I could not, I could say dot Apex. Right. Okay. Which meant I had to explain an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, it occurs to me, Brad Aids was explained this years and years ago. If you give a product a good code name, the product is inevitably a bad product name. Yeah, Avalon right. becomes right. Windows Presentation right. Foundation. There right? we go. And right. He was explaining this when he yeah. called he the code name was WPFE. Right. Oh yeah. The product Those name the days. Right. was Silverlight. Silverlight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you right. gave yeah. it a great code name, oh, Centennial. Yeah. You're going to end up with desktop bridges. Well, that's certainly that. true. So I worked <laughs> on Visual Studio Tools for Office. Yes. Yeah. Which There's is the shortened version of it. Yeah. It was yeah. actually the Microsoft Visual Studio 2000 and. Seven yeah. four office yeah. system, yeah. And, but its code name was Trinity, exactly. which was you oh, know been we, would, we should have realized gotta, at that point. Don't, you got to make crappy code names. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll all be happier yeah. for longer with bad code names, and they're hard Visual, to remember. Yeah, it's good to protect the indeed, product. Yes, it's so, a strategy here. So yeah, so yeah, that's you know. So our goal is to move you and click once when your your listeners was yeah uh, was like. Geez, click once allows me to update and have no IT pro. And that, that's yeah. kind of scary, yeah. right? Mm. Um, it's cool for some consumer stuff, um, but we also want to make sure that we don't you know, make IT pro's jobs more difficult. Right, and you don't sure. want to be a malware vector. Right, yeah. typically. Well, think, yeah. The biggest thing I saw with most click once challenges was that most devs just can't get through the certificate hurdles. Right. Like, to make that work properly. And that's mm -hmm. what you need to do. You need to have the certificates nailed. And and I just don't understand why why we haven't nailed certs yet. Like, yeah, it's really, actually a good idea to be great at certs. Absolutely. Mm. And, you know, that's something which we're really, really pushing hard, is that, you know, with MSX, we will not install unsigned code. There's no, Period. like, oh, you can turn the switch on or, like, yeah. click. Because you should never be deploying unsigned code. No, I, I right. totally agree. So, so, for example, I was working with a company in the UK, and they were using um, an order processing system that the update self updated. I don't know if it used click once, but it was self updating from yep. from the company from the actual ISV. Right, the ISV was doing great stuff. Didn't sign the code. Hmm. Malware affected it as it came down. Deleted their entire order processing system. 
they were gone for three weeks. Wow. And you imagine. It's millions. And yeah, right. And all because of, you know, a co signing cert costs 200 bucks. Right. right. So, well, and, it, and here's my argument you can get SSL certs today for free. Like, mm-hmm. why are we selling these things? Right. Why isn't this just a service? Why is it just I integrated totally agree. into studio? Anytime you build anything and want to deploy anything, we're going to give you a good cert and we're going to put it. If you've got Azure, you're Keyboard, already we're authenticated. Put it there. I right. am with you. I am with you. And yeah. that, certainly, how much grief that is a over the vision value for where a, we want to go. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason. Yep. Hey, Richard. Yeah, buddy. Guess what time it is now? It must be that happy time again. We're talking about security. It must be that happy time again. It's right. It's time to announce a new security product that makes your Windows machine lock up when it detects your user is doing something it doesn't like. It's called Chrome. <laughs> just a code name, though. That's just oh, a, that's code a code name. name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we <were> cool. <laughs> uh, high five for you, sir. That's a good one. So, so you can't say that out loud. That's not right. Sometimes <laughs> I say the right thing. <laughs> oh man! Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I can't go on. Funny. Yeah. Oh. It's actually t- <laughs> it's funnier in person. <laughs> it's funnier in person. <laughs> it's actually time to give away a D Experience subscription from our good friends at Dev Express to one lucky member of the .NET Rocks fan club. You know, everyone knows that DevExpress has great desktop controls, but their web tools are just great. They have this collection of HTML5 JavaScript controls called DevExtreme. And at the heart of the product line are these really powerful controls like grid, chart, pivot grid, tree list, and scheduler. But DevExtreme also comes with more than 50 touch-optimized client-side controls. Data visualizers, navigators, editors, lists, dialogues, and notification controls and general purpose controls like a filter builder, range slider, file uploader, scroll view, and more. And since they're all HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, they include integrations with things like jQuery, Knockout, React, Ionic, and Angular. Plus, DevExtreme controls come with ASP.NET MVC and ASP.NET Core wrappers, so they're infinitely flexible. But don't take our word for it. Go for a test drive at dx.netrocks.com. That's dx.netrocks.com. All right, buddy. Who's our winner? Today's winner is Russ Jester. Congratulations, Russ. Yeah. Golf clap for you. Yeah. And uh, Russ just won the D Experience subscription. A big pile of awesome from our friends at DevExpress just for being a member of the .NET Rocks fan club. And if Excellent. you'd like to be a member, go to .NET Rocks.com, click on the big Get Free Stuff button, answer a few questions, and join the fan club. We have thousands of members all over the world, and every show we like to give away stuff from our sponsors. And every December, we give away a $5,000 technology shopping spree to one lucky member of the fan club. But you got to sign up to win. And we also like to ask our guests. Sweet. <laughs> Can I sign up to win or am I invalidated no. now? No. <laughs> well, if you had $5,000 to spend on technology oh, today, what would, what would I you, spend $5,000 yeah, $5, on? Wow. Wow. Uh, well, clearly, inside MSIX, that you know, that's that's going to be the book for the future. No, um, wow, that's, that's a lot of books. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's expensive. <laughs> Many copies. <laughs> yeah, five thousand dollars on on just tech that I would want to use or developer tech. Hey, so anything you want. You know, I, I I just a huge fan of having a decent laptop. And, yeah, you know, okay. it's. I love my Surface, but my, my Surface laptop, I love that thing. And they're it's, finally, I mean, they're finally getting into Apple-esque pricing, right? You can uh, easily drop three that, grand that is, on a fully loaded right. Surface book. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, only the MacBook Pro can can take in take on five grand and go, that's all you got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, my 4K screen, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't live without that. So, mm. 4K screen... Yeah. Natural Man, keyboard, it's old school natural very keyboard. Predictable, the middle of the show where people just want the big 4K screens. Well, they, yeah, that's the 15 it's inch of the book, too. Yeah, it's oh, a no, 15 I, inch I have 4K. A, you know, I have my Surface laptop oh, I with the, okay. the, the dock, and then you have an external my 28 4K. inch. Yeah, it's Dude, just it's a beautiful thing. It's 43 inch 4K screen. Oh well, yeah, yes, 100 DPI, I, I, man. I, I, yeah. Every pixel, it's, no scaling. And you know, the older I get, I think I need more one of those. They should be a screen every day. I swear. Yep. Every yeah. show, no, they oh, yeah, you know, there's ultra wide ones. Those are pretty cool too, right? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, forty three. That's we just how do you, you don't scale it, so you use all the pixels. Yeah, mm. it's the only it's problem the is those beauty. top corners. 
they're a long way from you. You get neck strain <laughs> looking up there. at you. Yeah. I'm thinking like, about putting a special mount on it just so it leans into me oh, a little bit. Yeah, they use those corners. Sit back and yeah, be right there. Yeah. You got to get magnifiers for your glasses now. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, they're big. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, if you like Bill magnifiers, it is. Uh, you know, I look for technology that each time I touch it, it delights me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so which means I'm not talking about smartphones, right? <laughs> <laughs> but a really good keyboard, a really yeah. good mouse, yeah, yeah, a yeah. good headset, and a great screen. Like those are things you touch every day, and yeah. they should make you smile when you do. Yeah, good bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah. You know, I touch a bottle of wine often. <laughs> uh, although I know I've been <laughs> I've been lucky enough to use the 80 inch Surface Pro all, oh, Surface yeah. Hub all week. Yeah, oh, it's a little more are, than five grand. But yeah, a little dang, more. The that, the big one. Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm that's pretty to justify sweet. having the 42. Yeah. Like, could I put that in the room I, instead I, of a projector? Of course. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I like being married, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, there is that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. A happy wife, right? Yeah. 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 Good gadget. Yeah. All right. What the heck were we talking about? Yeah. Oh, yes. MSIX. So, I thought this was an installer. It, it, it shouldn't be this funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it is about managing packaging. Yeah. And, you know, really aiming at IT pros. This We've done... We like to think we've done a pretty good job for developers. We, right. But the challenge we had with developers is honestly our story with the desktop bridge was like, it's the store. And of course, we would like you to come to the store. But the difference in MSAX is you can install it from anywhere you want. Right. To. Yeah. Now, of course, you can just take it, put it in the store, and there's lots of great reasons to be in the store. Right. But And, it, and know, this is not the store, the public store. If you want to have a private yeah, set store of, for right. business, you can go do that. No problem. And but then like, it for downloads example, and runs in a sandbox. And if you use Creative Cloud, you might oh, yeah. to edit your stuff. Yep. Uh, yep. So they have a great app called XD in Creative Cloud. Yes. Well, that's actually an app X. It's a UWP app. But oh, cool. You don't know it. You just click install, and magic happens. Right. right. It just installs itself. Right. So with MSX, we want every Windows app to use MSX. And yeah. you can install it from everything. You know, one of our, you know, we, we didn't get it done in time because we couldn't actually find a USB floppy drive in time. But <laughs> it was like, you can install an MSX off a floppy drive if you wanted to. Uh, wow. We don't know why you would want to. Who but has a floppy drive? You're talking exactly. about a USB key, right? No, no, no. Oh. He's talking about a floppy uh, drive. You were talking about yeah. a floppy drive? Now, if Holy you want a way to make yourself feel old, explain to the younger members of your team what a floppy drive is. You know yes. that save icon? <laughs> that used to be physical. It's a 3D printed save icon, right? For, so, for my other show, Run uh, Radio, I actually made up fridge stickers in the shape of a three and a half inch floppy. Excellent. Which because isn't really floppy. You have to be old enough. It actually was. Magnet is kind of, kind of flexible. Well, inside, You yeah. have to be old enough to know how many jokes that is. <laughs> <laughs> I feel we like, are old enough. Yes. Because Why does it say Run Has Radio on this giant save icon? You're yes. not old enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, one of our jobs, honestly, is, you know, we were talking about Click Once. Is mm -hmm. that Click Once is actually pretty cool and... Actually, a lot of enterprises use it as well, and obviously they use sure. SCCM and Intune, mm -hmm. and that's and they go up that's the, cool. and they jump through the cert hoops. Yeah, like right. they do that yeah. work. Right, but you know, kind of our job with MSIX is almost to take the click out of click once, right? Yeah, so yeah. you just, just once you just <laughs> do it, and it automatically updates, and you can do it from a website. Yeah. And, you know, you can set the rules whether you want it to update in the background or mm. rely on the new version. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that we see is. And we introduced something like this in App V, where you could stream install an application. Right. And we, you know, we're pretty happy with that. Pretty, mm. you know, giving ourselves a big pat on the back. It's sure. really cool. Turns out it was difficult for network administrators to actually determine what was their throughput going to be. How do they model their bandwidth? Right. Mm. If, I've got, um, if I've got 100 workstations that all need an update. Yeah. Mm. And, and it's very it's hard little, to get them to take their time. Right. Mm. And if if those are in remote sites. Yeah, you know, we work with a lands. lot of schools. My kid's school, I think, use Comcast for their internet connections. Sure. Right. The yeah. cloud is cool until you've only got... Until all 100 <laughs> machines in that school right. like, <laughs> update time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so with MSAX, what we actually do, our kind of task to developers is like, put all the files you need inside the MSAX. Right. And then, then we'll deal with all the hard work for you there. So if you've got... Obviously, you've got V1, you have nothing there, we'll download everything. Right. You Version 1.1, just put all the new files that you want, all the changes in the 1.1 MSIX, and we'll actually detect what the differences are between what's installed on the so machine. You're not saying just the new files, but just give me a whole new just build. completely uh, new is, build. because You were going to install from scratch yep. directly to 1.1, this is yeah. what you get. Yeah. You guys will do the Delta. And we do the Delta, and we do a 64K page 
downloads. So nice. if you only changed 128K of a 100 megabyte yeah. app, Two pages. we'll just yeah, we'll just download that 128K. Nice. That's great. And we give you a tool that actually shows you what the differences are so you can determine what your network ah, throughput's right. going to so be. Yeah, that's actually going to cost me. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. I need to, do I need to do it in blocks or can yeah. I simply push it? Yeah. yeah. And then we, yeah, we even great. use that to save on disk space too. Right. You know, we see a lot of people use common controls or middleware. Yeah. And you know, we all live through the DLL hell yeah. and trying to keep all sure. that up to date. Again, just put all your middleware, all your files in the MSAX. So if you two have written an app that uses the same middleware, I install your app first. Obviously, I have to install the middleware. Right. If you're using exactly the same version, which is fairly common, mm-hmm. then we'll just hard link across to the version inside of your app mm. so that you don't get, you could have you know, 100 megabytes of middleware. It's only installed once. And if you uninstall his app, the next time I run mine, it's going to notice, oh, I have a dependency missing yeah, and pull it down. Yeah, no, we'll actually keep it because oh, we'll, we'll actually okay, do the rest you know going, oh, your app is still using uh, it. And great. if he changes versions and I don't, then that's fine. He's just using the new version. We now install the new version yep, for him. Yeah, we side by side. Which yeah. is because it could have, I originally installed the middleware from his install mm-hmm. and I took a dependency on it uh-huh. and then he upgraded and I didn't right. and now I own a copy of it. Yep. Great, man, my he, brain hurts. No, no, this, that's true. Yeah, so the, the beauty is it's, it's almost a free lunch. Almost. It's because almost. You, you just, developer, just put your stuff in there well, and it just I mean, does Andrew, it. not to be cynical, but as long as it works, it's going to be great. If that stuff breaks, it's going to be a challenge to diagnose. Oh, yes, it is. Um, now, the good news is we actually introduced this in Windows 8. So and it's worked we, well enough. We you are, didn't know. Oh no, we knew because it didn't work quite as well as we thought it was going to work. <laughs> what? Windows Eight was awesome. So, uh, yes, uh, well, uh, it was awesome in many different ways. The plumbing was amazing. Yeah, right, right, so, yeah. Um, the <laughs> that was some good plumbing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The pipe work there was really special. It's a fine pipe yeah. work. Not yeah. a lot of water flowing through it, but a lot of fine pipes. Um, and it was very so humble, too. We're on our many, yeah, many iterations on that. If you're and really, being, this is mature software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 this is battle tested on um, making sure that one works. Absolutely. Right. Very good. So, yeah, so that is really to help on that. And But developers, it's really interesting. You talk to developers, and they, they, they lovingly create their setup package. And we're all really proud of our yeah, setup yeah. package. Yep. They have no clue that IT pros just take that, throw it away, and create their own. Yeah, of course. So repackaging huh. Why did you tell them? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> I know. We've, we've, broken, we've broken down the myth. Which, um, and, you know, repackaging is a thing. And frankly, it was a, a process that was put in place back in the XP era when the operating system shipped every three to five years. Yeah. So did software, really. Yeah. So it didn't really matter. So you configured it, you customized it. But now software is updating all the time. Operating systems are updating essentially all the time. Yeah, constantly. And every time you repackage, we're finding that it costs an IT department about a thousand bucks. Wow! Mm. And they're doing it every OS and every app update. Yeah, every every configuration variation. Yeah. And, so we yeah. call this packaging paralysis. Hmm. Okay. So is you keep doing it, you rinse and repeat. You can't afford to stay current. It's like, hey, I can skip a couple and save some money. Right. Yeah. And which is what developers hate. Sure. And the IT pros are like, well, I need to manage. I need to yeah. keep this in the Give control. Give me the money and I'll talk mm. about it. Mm. So MSX, what we allow you to do is split the customizations from the application. So the application can keep updating. Your customizations, which are vital to get that to sure. work, still apply. Get yeah. And you can update them on a separate basis. Interesting. So you don't have to repackage. So as more ISVs nice. support MSIX, you don't even have to repackage it. I would just go, well, I'm just going to customize that. So, and you, know, you can customize the registry. You can put code in there too. So we were working with the Wall Street Bank. They have 600 XL add-ins wow. just for the finance oh, department. Man. They didn't know they had 600 XL of add-ins, course. but they, that runs their business. Yeah. So, you know, they could apply these add-ins to Office. Office keeps updating and they still work. So that is to really kind of unblock this update process. Right. The, the real question is, does the 600 add-ins work on the next version of Office? Like, but that, of course. Nice. So I'm, I'm still <laughs> I love kind your of, optimism. <laughs> I'm kind of curious as to how the virtualization of the registry and file stuff works. Is that at an OS level? Or yeah. Is, yeah. So we have, um, does we that have a, quite a few a, containers in Windows. Now you've been lying mm-hmm. to apps for many years in Windows. Right, um, you know, just being economic <laughs> with the yeah. truth. Yeah, right? so I need to put this INI file in System Thirty Two. Okay, yeah, no sure. <laughs> you want to change that yeah. file in System Thirty Two? No, no problem. Well, in the whole, right. yeah, yeah. What version of Windows I'm working? What version of Windows you like me to be? Because <laughs> yeah. I can be whoever yes, you yeah, want yeah, me to exactly. be. Exactly. Oh man. Um, so yeah, there are 
um, we, we have this kind of uh, continuum of containers. We have fairly lightweight containers, which um, you know, which we use for the desktop bridge, but other parts of the operating system use that all the way through to the Defender application guard. We've seen that in Edge, where mm-hmm. it, you have a completely isolated kernel, sure, which is awesome. We want to enable you to go do that if you really, really want to, but that's one to two gigabytes of overhead. So right? the virtualized registry and file system at the OS level. So how do you <laughs> how do you use the registry really if you want to? I mean, if it's at the OS level, is it a switch that you turn on? I mean, you don't want the installer to. So the the application, if you're inside of an MSIX, then you your registry is is virtualized. Oh, I now, see. Now the challenge there, of course, is is like, well, what if my application was relying on the registry of another application? Uh, so again, Office is a good example of that. Right. Yeah. You know, you know. I think most of us know that Word is actually the editor for Outlook. Yeah, yeah. And well, the way they did that was, you know, frankly, pretty incestuous. They, you know, they really yeah. know what's going on. Well, if I if I isolated the registry between those two applications, they wouldn't know about each other. Mm. Right. So inside the container, you can say, okay, well, these apps all run inside the same container. Right. They need to be so able they to see, see each all other. the same registry. I see. Um, so for ISVs, so like for if you're if you had a suite like Office, then you can control what container you're in. And IT admins can also say, well, look, I have this line of business app that relies on Excel. I need it to run inside the same container. They get to control that. And so you start setting these manifests that say, these are the relationships I need to have. Now, on consumer software, you don't really want people to be able to just stuff code into other other applications. So if it's just a plain consumer app, we're, we're allowing publishers to set the container, but you can't force another publisher's app into another, into another publisher's yeah. But I guess the take-home here is that you guys handle all of that. You don't, yeah. you don't leave those decisions up to the, uh, the person making the, the right. script, install yeah. script. But, you know, our, our message for, uh, for uh, enterprises, if you're really the admin, you own them. It's your app, your rules. You right. can, hey, if you really want to go crazy, go ahead and do it, uh-huh. right? I mean, when, we want you to be successful. Yeah. We sure. don't want to reduce the power. But we want to give you the control so you can decide what it can or can't do. Yeah, and be able to granulize that. Right. You know, back in the Metro days, we were making fun of Win8. Those original app models that they presented back in 2011, they were all about that kind of encapsulation mm-hmm. that we really wanted to be able to yeah. lock down yeah. hard yeah. And, and protect that stuff. And then the developers rebelled. Yes, yes. You know, with good reason. It mm. was it was hard. Yeah. What you were asking was hard. You know, the IT guy might have thought, "Wow, like we are really getting you're yeah. basically getting to the point of a manifest of this is the capabilities of this app yeah. within Windows." Yeah. Mm. But I, it was hard. It, and it I was think hard. It was maybe just a mile too far. And yeah, we went too far. I think we 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 adjusted the dial to eleven, and when really they wanted, you know, is we wanted. You'll see us. We're doing that in RS four. This out now in RS five. Right is that giving applications more flexibility. We want to have that level of control so the user can be in control. So, like, if your application is going to use the camera, Mm -hmm. we totally want you to be able to use the camera. Right. But the user should be able to decide, or the IT admin, if that's... It was like, hey, I'm okay with that. Yeah, right. Um, So, putting the user in control, but not restricting the power of your application. Sure. So the goal there is to give applications the capabilities they need. Yeah, but not no more. Yeah, not they that can blanket, ask for right. as many as they want. Yeah, and and we have different tiers of who can make the decision to allow yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But by default, we want minimum rights. Right, because your applications, you know, it could get owned. It could get bred. Yeah, right. Stuff and happens. Stuff it's just happens. Reality. You don't. We don't want it to happen, but it does. Yeah, mm. but. If you get owned by some malware, then the malware can do what your application was being allowed to do, right. as and opposed to do anything. Yeah. Do you have a favorite anti-malware? Uh, do app? I have a favorite? Oh, Lord. Well, I think officially I should say Defender. Defender yeah, yeah. Doesn't yeah. really awesome. say anything other than Defender. Well, right. But I mean, some some things get by Defender, right? I mean, they do, and you know, it's a it's a constant struggle for us. Yeah. Because you know, if you look at the patterns for what malware is trying to do, which is my job to try and stop that. Yeah. Well, the anti-malware stuff kind of has to use the same patterns to protect us against that. Yeah. So right. malware, anti-malware looks a lot like malware. Yeah, it's well, like some of it is just really trusted malware, right? Yeah. Or if you look at what anti-cheat is trying to do for games. It's awesome, but you're trying to they're doing code injection, all kinds of crazy things, which is because they're doing it for good. Huh. But so it's a fine line of not allowing that right. for 
the vast majority of yeah. our machines would be way safer if that was simply impossible. Right. But because we have to make it possible, now we get into the whole, is yeah. this one allowed to and that one's not allowed to? Yeah. And, yeah. and that means you're basically one click away from allowing the bad guy to right. do whatever they want. And to so yeah. our job is to make it increasingly difficult or increasingly easy to control what things can go do. Right. Yeah. So that, you know, we can help the industry modernize and yeah. get to a better place. It's not going to happen overnight. No. I think this is a lesson we learned with eight. Sure. Mm. It was like, come rewrite your code. I don't think anybody wants to rewrite that no. code. Right? <laughs> Even if you know it should be rewritten. Yeah. Especially web you developers. You don't want to do that, right? So, hey, you're writing JavaScript? Come on over here. Yeah. Yeah. You'll I, love this. You'll I love this. I had a this. good analogy the other day. It's like, I want a new cooker for my, for my kitchen. Right. That's cool. Mm. But you're kind of telling me I have to rebuild my house for that for that, for that new cooker. range, yeah. right? Yeah, mm. yeah <laughs> that's a tough I didn't, sell. I didn't, I didn't need the cooker that bad. There's yeah. relatively <laughs> few that are going to get over that threshold, yeah, right? So yeah. it doesn't matter how great that cooker is, yeah. right? If, yeah, there are very few that are going to be out yeah. here. Yes, so, I always wanted to tear down my whole house, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we want you to give you the opportunity to use more and more modern code. Mod, you, know, the, yeah. you saw the XAML islands this week, right? Yeah, in terms and then I of think that. those those things seem to be all about. Let me bring what you've got to the new world so that I can show you the new world beside your old crappy world. Right. <laughs> and maybe you'll want to come join yeah, us yeah. piece by piece. Yeah, yeah. And we want to make it an attractive place for you to you be. Know, we, we, the, 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 one would argue that the collapse of communism came from putting a McDonald's in Red Square, right? Like <laughs> that when, they, Who knew, right? Yeah. But you're right. So yeah. this, you know, yeah. really... Demo yeah. Islands is the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no good answer that question. <laughs> then who's Mayor McCheese? <laughs> Wait a second. Mike Harsh, I think, probably. Yeah, maybe Mike Harsh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's recording who's a session in the other room. Yeah, who's right. the Hamburglar? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? But I, I do think that Microsoft has always been well served by building these bridges yeah. from one version to yeah, the yeah. next, allowing yeah, yeah. people to carry their code forward, yeah. modernize when they when they see value, when they mm-hmm. when it, it yeah. makes sense for them. But you can't leave them behind. Right. Or they stay. Yeah. No they code left behind. That's yeah. kind of what they we don't want come to try forward and do, right? So it's yeah. There's a reason why the V B runtime is still in Win ten. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, that was my first ever demo of Desktop Bridge was getting a VB6 app VB6 running. And, that's right. so cool. And yeah. you've got that 20-inch 4K screen, so you know how well oh, original yeah. WinForms <laughs> VB app looks. Yeah, it looks really quite special. How's scale and working for oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But I'm looking forward to these new bits they're, they're going to put out the next year or so. That yeah, no more DPI. screen magnifier. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. That yeah. might be interesting. Yeah. It's good stuff. So what's, uh, what's next for you? What's on your in- uh, oh, inbox? Oh, so... Um, Gosh, well, finishing MSIX, that's, you know, that's a, it's kind of the year of MSIX. We're, it's on GitHub. It's, uh, yeah, so we open sourced it March 7th, like, 7th I think, okay. mm. in terms of, so we have implementations on 10, Windows 10, obviously, yep. 7, iOS, Android, and Mac. We don't expect Apple to suddenly start taking MSIXs mm. into the, I mean, we wouldn't say no, but that's not really our goal, Right. is yeah. to, we want developers to be able to standardize on this packaging format right so kevin announced it on windows 7 and really the the idea there is you know as a developer build this msax package now obviously on windows 10 that will just work yep and we have containers and all that good stuff Mm -hmm. but on windows 7 like even if we really wanted msax to be able to double click on msax well, there's kind of a chicken and egg there. There is no handler for that. Right? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's a nine-year-old uh, OS, man. Right. Yeah. And the goal there is to replace cab files, if you remember those, sure. Sure. which is at the heart of most MSAXs, yep. is like reuse the MSAX inside of your MSI and just pull all the information out, all the files and all the, the metadata, and use that. And that's why we open source the reader and the manifest reader and the ability to check the signatures and really... To really encourage people to go to sign software. Do the right thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep banging the drum on, we should make certs free and trivial and yeah. just part of the workflow. Yeah. You should, you should get one even when you're not looking. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And, and just ensuring that it means that you really are you. You, you are so you. People, and you cared about this code. Yeah. And we yeah. made it easier for you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It should be doable because you're authenticated when you're using Visual Studio. Sure. Yeah. So we already we know with identity. Yeah. The fact that it would hopefully just drop directly into Azure Key Vault so you know figure out where to thing. handle your private keys and all that stuff. Yeah. Like this should just be integrated. Yeah. Friends don't let friends install unsigned software, right? I'm calling it. Mark Miller to have him update the install buddy. That's it. Yep. Yeah, there you go. You uh, use uh, a we, for install buddy. <laughs> yeah, we we so met with buddy. him just last week, right? So yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. It's been a pleasure. Anytime. Yeah, it's a pleasure. All right. And we'll see you next time on .NET Rocks. .NET Rocks is brought to you by Franklin's Net and produced by Pwop Studios, a full-service audio, video, and post-production facility located physically in New London, Connecticut, and, of course, in the cloud. Online at pwop.com. Visit our website at dotnetrocks.com for RSS feeds, downloads, mobile apps, comments, and access to the full archives going back to show number one, recorded in September 2002. And make sure you check out our sponsors. They keep us in business. Now go write some code. See you next time. Got a band by the FCC. Yes, I'm a, a